The Venator-class Star Destroyer is one of the most iconic symbols of the Galactic Republic. This Clone Wars hero is one of the greatest warships in history, so it's about time we took a look at it. I'm Joey from Radio Free Coruscant, and this is the Venerable Venator. Design. The Kuat Drive Yard's Venator-class Star Destroyer was a large, wedge-shaped capital ship with two wings and command towers at the rear just ahead of the tail and engine cluster. The port tower housed the Starfighter Command Bridge, or the ship's air traffic control if you will, and the starboard tower was the command bridge for the Venator itself. The interior of the command bridges was an innovative design that emphasized the command authority hierarchy and would go on to become the standard layout for all Imperial ships. The Venator had large hangar doors running down the center of the ship on the top for its starfighter complement, two smaller hangars on the sides for medium ships, and a rectangular docking bay on the bottom for large ships. On most Venators, the dorsal and ventral hangars were connected via doors in the floor for greater versatility. However, later models did away with the ventral hangar doors and had all hangar access go through the underside, and also combined the two side hangars into one hangar running all the way through the center of the ship, connecting with the main hangar. The Venator was primarily designed for ship-to-ship -ship combat, but its incredible volume of hangar and cargo bay space made it suitable for carrier operations, cargo and troop transport, and replenishment missions as well. Due to its extremely varied mission profile, it was very difficult to classify the Venator. Officially, it was referred to as a Venator-class Star Destroyer, but was also called a Battleship Cruiser or Attack Cruiser by some. The Venator was designed by Kuat Drive Yard's engineer Lyra Wessex, whose team would later go on to design the Imperial Star Destroyer, Executor Class Super Star Destroyer, and Raider Class Corvette for the Empire. Specifications The Venator was a fairly large ship for its time at 1,137 meters long by 548 meters wide and 268 meters tall. It had a Class 1 hyperdrive and a maximum atmospheric speed of 975 kilometers per hour, achieved through four large, two medium, and four small engines. These and all its other systems were powered by a 3.6 quadrillion gigawatt hypermatter annihilation reactor that consumed 40,000 tons of fuel per second at maximum power. The Venator was armed with eight DBY-827 dual heavy turbolaser turrets, two medium dual turbolaser cannons, 52 to 64 point defense laser cannons depending on the variant, six tractor beam projectors, four proton torpedo tubes, several AV-7 anti-vehicle cannons mounted as deck guns, and they occasionally carried an SPHA turbolaser cannon in the ventral docking bay to protect the ship while launching landing craft or to attack large targets below the ship. The Venator's DBY-827 turrets were some of the most advanced capital-grade weapons fielded during the Clone Wars, with a wide variety of settings to ensure maximum destructive output. In long-range tracking mode, the cannons could deliver precise hits to targets up to 10 light minutes away. For close quarters combat, they could be switched to fast tracking mode, which allowed the turrets to rotate their full 180 degree range in just 3 seconds to follow close, fast targets. They also had 7 power settings for maximum firepower and efficiency. The Venator was known for its role as a carrier almost more than its role as a battleship. It was capable of carrying several squadrons of V-Wings, V-19 Torrents, 
ARC 170s, Delta 7B Aether Sprites, Ada 2 Actuses, Z95 Headhunters, or BTLB Y Wings, as well as hyperdrive rings if necessary. For ground deployment operations, it could also carry 20 to 40 LAATI gunships, 24 heavy vehicles such as ATTEs or similar, and various shuttles and support craft, including LAATC tank carriers, new class attack shuttles, T6 Jedi shuttles, and more. Finally, it could dock ships up to the size of a Charger C-70 cruiser in the Ventral Bay, though it was not common practice to carry one full-time. The Venator had a crew of 7,400 people and could carry 2,000 passengers, typically clone troops. It had a cargo capacity of 20,000 tons, including two years of consumables. The price of a Venator was not known to the public, but it was estimated to cost around 59 million credits. History the Venator-class Star Destroyer was, like many of the Grand Army of the Republic's vehicles, designed in secret by Kuat Drive Yards. It was first deployed early in the Clone Wars in 22 BBY. Venators were present for most of the major battles of the Clone Wars, including at Christophsis, Ryloth, Karida, and more. The most significant engagement was the climactic Battle of Coruscant, where over 1,000 Venators defended the Republic capital from a Separatist invasion fleet. Several Venators were also present for the concurrent Siege of Mandalore, and one of these was used to transport the captured Maul to Coruscant, though he destroyed the ship and escaped in the chaos of Order 66 along the way. The Venator also served as the primary capital ship of the Empire for the first few years of its rule over the galaxy. There was much less for Venators to do during this time, but they were present for the bombardment of Tipoka City and genocide of the Kaminoans, as well as several anti-rebel conflicts. The Venator was swiftly phased out as soon as the Imperial One-class Star Destroyer entered production, with some older Venators entering scrapyards as early as one year into the Imperial Era. However, the last Venator didn't float off the assembly line until 5 BBY, and most of the last remaining Venators were unceremoniously retired shortly after the Battle of Yavin. Most were sent directly to scrapyards, but some were simply abandoned where they lay, including one on Coruscant that was discovered nearly intact by rebel pilots during an attack on the planet in 3 ABY. However, a handful did remain in Imperial service to the very end, with a small task force of Venators being used to guard the Sanctuary Pipeline, a secret hyperspace route between Solist and Endor that was used to covertly construct the second Death Star. While it is clear that the Imperial Navy favored the more heavily armed and intimidating Imperial Star Destroyer, there must have been someone high on the command chain who still respected the Venator to give such a critical posting to this old ship. And that's everything there is to know about the Venator-class Star Destroyer. Let me know what you think of the ship and what your favorite space battle of the Clone Wars is in the comments. I also have a video about every single known Venator that you can check out if that interests you. It's pretty old, in fact it was my seventh ever video, but I think you will still enjoy it. To support the channel, please subscribe and share this video with a friend. As of this writing, I am nearly to 4,000 subscribers, and I'm sure I will be at or over that by the time you see this. It took just over 90 days to get from 2,000 to 3,000, and we have just over 90 days left in the year, so I would be absolutely thrilled to see 5,000 subscribers by January 1st. So like I said, share the channel with your friends. With that said, I will see you next week. RFC, out.